What's up, Nail Geeks, and welcome to my last video of 2023. I'm super excited that it is Polish Pickup, actually the first Polish Pickup of 2024, and we are kicking it off with the Deadly Plants theme. This has produced quite a few um, really interesting sort of finishes. So I'm really excited. We've got quite a bit of a lineup to kick off the new year, so I'm very excited that it's quite a plump, juicy video. So um, I feel like it's been a minute since I've recorded. Um, December actually turned into an accidental uh, two and a half week break somewhere around there. And uh, I have a nasty cold to close out the year with. And I thought, okay, let me just wait until I'm less raspy, whatever, but time's ticking. And I really wanted to get this out before wish listing. So here we are. I apologize. I know once we get over to the actual nail swatching part, um, that microphone that I use is a more of a almost ASMR type of microphone. So I'm going to try to stay as far away from it because I personally don't like mouth sounds and stuff like that. So I'm going to do my best to make sure that we're nice and uh, as cleared out as possible. The holidays just kind of took over and this month was such a blur. I feel like I just stuck as much as I possibly could in the last two weeks. And I think this is one of the first years that I have to say I'm kind of glad it's over. This little lull between uh, Christmas time and, you know, the kids going wild for presents and stuff. And then going into the new year, it's it's peaceful, I guess. So I'm really thankful for that. And I'm thankful for all of you, too. And I'm very excited that uh, we have this amazing, super long video to get through. So before we get to the swatches, we're going to stick to our usual programming and we're going to talk about the uh, first shaming corner of 2024. Um, I'm going to go over November's November 2023 and December 2023. Um, I did uh, do some redraws on the last PPU video for December. So go back and check that out if you um, haven't seen my December video. I know the polishes aren't available anymore, but go on the description of that video to see if you're a winner because I have had quite a few of you on the redraw that did not contact me, which it is what it is. Um, I'm doing my best to make sure we all get codes, but um, I, I know I just, it's a gamble. I can't guarantee that everyone is uh, following every single month, and I'm just grateful for those of you who who do. So go check that out. And in the meantime, we're going to shame the November and December winners who did not contact me. So from November's winners, we've got Hot Pink 22 Full, uh, Melissa with two A's, 4168, uh, Princess in Exile, 7225, and uh, Crystal Bartman, 5504. You uh, four, please Email me and uh, December, we've got uh, Danella Z2189. We've got Janet Dunlevy uh, 3926, LBR 88X30, uh, Leslie Short 8348, and Lisa Cormier 36. So if you are on any of the aforementioned names, please email me, thepolishedmage at hotmail.com and I'll get you a $10 PPU gift certificate to the shop. Our usual, we're gonna have another giveaway for this video too. So all you gotta do is just leave a comment below, um, say hi, what's on your wish list, anything to that um, floats your boat, let me know. And uh, that will be included into uh, one of 10 winners to receive a $10 PPU gift code to the shop. I'm gonna have this giveaway going until Tuesday, January 2nd at 4 p.m. Central Time. I do my best to make sure that I stick to that 4 p.m. Central. Sometimes it does bump a little bit later, depending on if I get the baby to sleep later or what have you, but I will do my best. And I will have that pinned comment there uh, that day. So check there and also check your YouTube notifications too, if you, um, cause I, I will also respond to, re reply to your comments too. I've got medicine head, so I've got lots of day quill in me. So I'm just kind of in this hyper high sort of state right now. And uh, I'm hoping this isn't going to be too much of a nightmare for editing. Which brings me to my final pointer before we get to the swatches. We are so close to 6,000 subscribers. I'm freaking pumped. And I have so many really good ideas. I'm hoping I can execute for this coming year in 2024. Um, if you're not following or subscribe to me, 
now would be a really cool time. Um, I don't check if you're subscribing, if you um, win my giveaways or anything like that. But I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, I feel like we literally just a couple months ago um, celebrated 5K. And I may or may not be able to get another custom polish, one of a kind polish of some type, maybe if we can get to 6K, I'll see if I can get a whip up a good giveaway for that. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's check out some pretties. And first up, we've got Baroness X. This is Deadly Berry, described as a thermal fluid art polish that has a deep green when cold to bright grass green when warm. This one's inspired by Black Nightshade. Price is $12.50 and there is a to be decided cap. Walking through this tutorial just real quick, I'm speeding everything up here. I chose earthy colors to kind of go along with the whole plants theme. And I'll list out what I used here in the description box if you're curious which specific creams I did. But I like to do a just splotchy sort of look on the mat and then let it dry down. I let this dry down for two days, to be honest, and I came back to it. I'm using Baroness X's Hydromancy Top Coat because it rewets the decal very well. You just kind of stick it up. Now, I was being really constrained for time when I did the swatches for PPU here, so I did not give this enough time to dry off, but it still kind of worked out. As you can see, not so satisfying on the peel up. So when you're doing this, this is just zen out time. I would say give yourself plenty of time to mess around to get your decal to get the image that you want. Now, because it's tacky, it makes it really easy to go in and just kind of use a cuticle pusher or really any tool. I've also found um, just kind of playing with fire a little bit that the reverse side of an X-Acto knife works. If you're gonna do something like that, of course, you know, disclaimer, be careful. But I just press it in, then clean it up with uh, acetone that's been softened with the acetone antidote. That way I'm not getting too much acetone on my very sensitive skin as I've come to find out. And then Deadly Berry can also be worn on its own. You don't have to use it just for fluid art polish. I think two coats is perfect. It has a very creamy, curly type of formula to it. It spread very easy on the nail. And even with my wide load nails, I didn't see a need to go up to a third coat. So also very reactive temperature. You can see on the ice water shot there. And what's really cool is if you do it in fluid art, your whole decal will change color too. And here we've got Beau Rev. This is Blooming Azalea, described as a plum mauve magnetic shifting base with green to aqua shimmer and a peach magnetic pigment. This one is 12 with no cap. So this has a very smooth type of formula, but it felt very light to me. So because of that, I took it up to three coats. When you're using magnetic polish, you want to make sure you've got a ton of pigment on your nails to get the most payoff when you use a magnet. Now, I personally think this looks fantastic unmagnetized. This is so uh, versatile in how you wear it in that, uh, honestly, I just, you'll see here in just a moment. So three coats, whether or not you're gonna wear it magnetized or not, and you're good to go. It does dry on quite flat, so I would suggest a good plumping glossy top coat. But when you magnetize it, this is really interesting. So this is kind of like that Vapid that we saw, I think a month or two ago. It's got this really soft magnetic effect. It's not the most noticeable. There's not much contrast there, but when you magnetize it, it gives it this really interesting type of glow. It's like multi-dimensional and in shaded lighting, you'll see it the most. And I think you'll get a better idea that of, of my macro shot here. There is a ton of shift going on with it. And here we've got BKL. This is the Foxglove King, described as a blackened teal base with pink to green shimmer and finished with a scattered silver reflective glitter finish. This is inspired by the book written by Hannah Witten. Price is 14 and there is no cap. So this has a lovely jelly formula to it. It builds up very easy to opacity at three light coats. I'm gonna suggest going in light to normal depending on the length of your nails. I personally appreciate that plumper, more pronounced type type of look, and especially given that I've got the wide load nail issues going on, I think that third coat was absolutely necessary for me. This does have a bit of texture and a thirstiness to it because it has those silver reflective glitters that have this very scattered type of sparkle to them. In the sunlight, you'll see what you see on my full hand shot there. It's, it's just scattered. It's very pretty. It's very soft. In person, there is this lovely glow that takes on this almost limish, greenish sort of effect. You can see it on my macro shot there. It is quite difficult to photograph, but it's, it's there in shaded lighting. And here we've got cameo colors. This is aconite. I apologize if I said that incorrectly. 
This is a deep purple jelly with slight hollow sparkle, packed with pink to red to copper to green shifting shimmer and hollow micro flakes. This one's 12 with a cap of 250 bottles. Now we have a lush purple. I always like these medium toned type of purples. They flatter me the best and I think that they're truly universally flattering. Now the Cameo has a lighter type of almost jelly-ish, somewhat curly formula. I don't want to call it a jelly because it felt a touch heavier than that, but not quite creamy either. So we're going to say it's a curly and I think three coats is perfect. This is stunning and I don't think my full hand shot gave you guys near as good of an idea of what I'm seeing in person. I actually went downstairs to go check my mail after I swatched this and in my apartment building is lighting outside. It looked stunning. It had this like metallic sort of look to it. It's it's really, truly pretty. And here we've got Chameleon Nails. This is a Tropa Belladonna described as a black when cold to colorless when warm thermal filled with a variety of iridescent flakes shifting purple, violet, pink, orange, green finished off with a black flake. This one's inspired by its namesake. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 400 bottles. All right, so we have a very reactive thermal. I've come to appreciate that uh, Chameleon really likes thermal polishes and I'm not mad at it because they do them ridiculously well. The pigment is very reactive, no issues. I've never really had to kickstart them, so to speak, at least from the ones that I've been working on the last couple of months and they apply very nice. I think two coats is perfect if you choose to wear it on its own. And just for shiggles, I wanted to show you guys and kind of skip ahead to the top ring and show you what it looks like over green because I truly think this one's meant to be worn either way. So we included that here. And of course, we'll check it out at the Willet Topper segment again at the end of the video. This does have a bit of thirstiness because of all the flakes. So I would suggest a plumping, glossy top coat. And next up, we've got Crystal Knockout. This is Angelic Poison, described as a neon green base with iridescent flakes in gold, orange, and green with matte glitters and pink, red, white, and orange. This one's inspired by Angel Trumpets. Price is $12.50 and there is no cap. So Crystal Knockout always knocks out, pun intended, <laughs> these Crelly type formulas and this is no exception. I'm gonna suggest two coats on this with the caveat that you apply it the way I do in the video, especially if you've got wide, low nail beds like myself, you're gonna need to go in with a light coat on that first coat and then the second coat do the icing method. I did need to do it just a touch of careful placement to make sure I get even dispersal of the glitters, but I had no issues in terms of fishing. Now this will dry down with texture and thirstiness. So I did use a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat in my full hand shot there and for my swatch photos. This one's really popping and I think it's going to translate really well for spring colors. And here we've got Danglefoot. This is Poison Ivy's Toxic Kiss. P.S. Let's all give Danglefoot a very warm welcome to the channel. This is described as a grass green shimmer that shifts orange, pink, bright green. And this is inspired by Poison Ivy. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 250 bottles. So this is what I would classify as a straight true foil like finish. It's very flattering, very pretty, and it's got mostly a jelly feel to application, but it built perfectly for me at two coats, which kind of blew my mind. I thought of going up to a third coat, but honestly, I feel like it was going to be overbuilt because the formula has that rich, squishy like effect to it. The shimmer itself has a very strong glow to it. And here is DRK Nails. This is Azalea, described as a chameleon pink to green mixed with purple candy flakes and reflective glitters. This one's inspired by its namesake. Price is 13 and there's a cap of 300 bottles. So this is another one I would describe as being very versatile. This can be worn as a topper or by itself. Of course, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but this looks fantastic on its own too. So when you build it up, if you want to wear it like this, as it's, I guess, initially intended, I would suggest going up to three coats with it. This is one of those uh, finishes with the reflective glitters that you'll want to use the texture from your previous coat to adhere your next coat. And I didn't see a need to go generous or anything like that. It does dry down very thirsty because it's just packed full of flakes and reflective glitters. So I would strongly suggest using a good coat of glitter smoother and a glossy top coat. And here we've got Emily Damali. This is Noxious, described as a green crelly with pink to green iridescent shifting flakes inspired by the oleander plant. Price is 12 and there's a cap of 320 bottles. So no surprise here, Emily Damali's Crellies are fantastic, easy to build up formula. They're very smooth on application. And that is very impressive given how much flakes are packed into this. 
I do want to note that I think on my actual individual nail swatch here, this is more indicative to the color than my photos were. I think my pictures came out just a bit like two to three shades lighter of a green. This is more of what you're seeing right here on that second and third coat. So it is just a touch darker in person. I think my full hand shot here uh, it also translates pretty well to what I'm seeing in person. It's just, I just think my pictures just came out almost neon like it was kind of weird. But anyways, it's more of a vine type green, if that makes sense. I'm going to suggest two to three coats for opacity and a plumping glossy top coat to finish it off. And here is Femme Fatale. This is Jeepers Creepers. Described as a cool toned purple jelly base packed with red, gold, green iridescent flakes, red, gold, green to blue UCC flakes, and black micro flakes. This one's 14 with a cap of 400. So speaking of curly, flaky filled formulas, we've got another one right here. This is very smooth on the nail. It really exploits that pond effect between that iridescent look and the purple base. I do think that my video here is being pretty color accurate to what I'm seeing in person. This is a true medium purple that builds up very well. I think three coats is going to flatter this one the absolute best. And I would suggest a glitter smoothing top coat in addition to a glossy top coat as it did have a bit of texture and a touch thirstiness to it. I think that little bit of smoothing action is necessary and you're good to go. And here we've got Hearts and Promises. This is Monkshood Blue Beauty, described as a deep blue jelly base with orange to gold and red Aurora pigment shift. This one's in inspired by Monkshood. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 300 bottles. Now this is what I would consider that medium, really beautiful, almost cobalt type base. It is very true jelly formula. So I think if you're wanting that really in your face, opaque type look, I would suggest going in with a uh, nude to you type of color as an undie or some type of blurring base. If, uh, if you have some sort of free edge, especially prominent free edge. Overall, this is very shimmery and it is quite vibrant. It just builds very much on the more sheer side. I would suggest a glossy top coat to plump this one out. And here we've got Jen and Berries. This is the Fox Gloves Are Off. Described as a cool berry purple jelly base loaded with intense warm red to orange to gold shifting shimmer and a subtle touch of hollow micro flakes. This one's inspired by Fox Gloves. Price is $13.25 and there is a cap of 250 bottles. So speaking of that medium type purple I always love, this absolutely falls into that category. It's vibrant, it's flattering across the board on all skin tones, and the shimmer is so vibrant against that purple base. I think my full hand shot here, I took it slow and steady so you guys could see bright lights, indoor lights, and those lovely public bathroom lights. It's gonna just light up with that fiery type of glow and at more extreme angles, you'll see that orangey effect. And here is KB Shimmer, how are you doing? This is described as an almost indigo base with strong blue shimmer and scattered hollow flecks. This one's inspired by Wolf Spain. Price is 12 and there is no cap. This is stunning. And I try not to do it very often in all of my reviews, especially my videos where I'm reviewing multiple polishes, but this is one that you have to have. I'm just going to say it. It's so glowy. I was just, my socks were just completely knocked off. It's stunning. I'm going to suggest two to three coats though. Personally, I thought three light coats popped the best and gave you the most shimmer payoff and it dries down quite flat. So you'll want to finish with a good plumping glossy top coat, but what you see on my full hand shot there is what I saw in person. This is stunning. It's going to look beautiful on any, any skin tone. Oh, it's just, this one is chef's kiss. It is so good. I really strongly urge you to grab it and add it to your cart. And here is Crisable Designs. This is Don't Touch the Calico Bush. Described as a soft lilac base with green to blue to purple Aurora shimmer and a magenta reflective glitter. This one's inspired by Calico Bushes. Price is $12.75 and there's a cap of 250 bottles. This is so soft and delicate. I'm really digging it. I think this is going to translate ridiculously well to our spring colors coming up here shortly. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, it's it's beautiful. It's very soft. It's got that nice princessy sort of vibe and it's quite glowy. Now, this has that very intense scatter of reflective glitters and it sparkles so, so well. It's elegant. It's almost like I do think this is like a wedding polish to me. It has a jelly formula, so I think three coats is perfect. It does have a harsh, thirsty dry down. 
So this is one of those reflective glitters. Once again, use the texture from your previous coat to adhere your next and finish with a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat and you are glowing good. And here is Monarch Lacquer. This is Belladonna, described as a deep plum base, heavily loaded with teal to violet to pink shifting chameleon flakes. Inspired by its namesake, price is 13 and there is no cap. So that official description is very accurate to how it applies. This is very much loaded up with flakes. They are of the very heavy variety. I had no issues getting them out of the bottle. You're going to get so much on your brush. So with that said, I'm going to suggest going in cautiously on your brush strokes. The flakes themselves are like, like, um, like gold foil, like the gold flake you use in like cooking and stuff the, in like bakery stuff. It's like that. So they, they stick really well to your nail. So no issues with that. But um, there are so many of them. I think you'll want to just do like almost like the icing method on each of your coats and just let it slowly build up. It's beautiful. There's a ton of glow here. I think my full hand shot gives you a really good idea of what I was seeing in person. I'm going to suggest three really light coats to slowly build this one up and a good glossy top coat. I don't think my photos did very good justice of this. These types of finishes tend to look like there's bald spots in my photos for whatever reason. It might be my camera settings. Please know in person, it's just like a mosaic of flakes. And here is Night Owl Lacquer. This is Wither Rose, described as a charcoal linear hollow with pink to copper shimmer, inspired by Minecraft's Wither Rose. Price is 13 and there is no cap. I really love the interpretation of the theme here on this one. Of course, I'm a big Minecraft nut with my son, my oldest, but I really like that. Anyways, so this is a strong rainbow linear hollow goodness. All of my hollow fans, you're going to need this one. It's so very holographic. Just one of those linear bombs, if you will. I think two normal coats is perfect. It applies very creamy like on the nail and finish with a good glossy top coat to exploit all those rainbow goodies. And Psych Minerals brings us Ghastly Smell. This is a raspberry jelly base loaded with pink reflective glitters and iridescent blue flakes. This one's inspired by the Noxious Dragon Lily. Price is 13 and there is a cap of 250. This is very flattering. I think this is one of those uh, magenta-y sort of raspberry pinks that will look amazing on any skin tone. Now, true to how Psych Minerals does her reflective finishes, she packs these things up so, so good. And uh, this one's no exception. I went in for three pretty light coats. I went in just a touch heavier on that third coat and I instantly regretted it. So I would suggest three light coats. Use the texture again from your previous coat to adhere the next coat. Now you'll really want to use a glitter smoothing top coat underneath your glossy top coat to smooth this out as it does have lots of texture and thirstiness. It is so worth it because this looks ridiculous in person. Another one I don't think my swatch photos did justice of. I would refer to my full hand shot on the video for. And here we've got Rogue Lacquer. This is Bleeding Hearts. Described as a pale spring green with strong pink to gold shifting Aurora shimmer. Inspired by the Bleeding Hearts plants. Price is 13 and there is no cap. All right, so we've got Crelly Goodness here. This was a love for me at first sight of the bottle. It has a creamy smooth formula. It does have just the slightest bit of streaking on it. So I'm going to really point out, um, just don't overwork your brush. Let it float over your nails to prevent any sort of streaking, which is what I did on that third coat there. Go in real light too, because it does have a very plump type of feel on the brush strokes. It dries down flat, so I would suggest a good glossy top coat. And this is so ridiculous. I love it so much. These types of colors, I think, look really good on medium and deep skin tones, especially those of us that have uh, that really bronzy sort of look. And here is Sassy Sauce, Naughty by Nature, described as a blackened raisin when cold to dusty blue when warm thermal, curly with red to orange shimmer and black to red tiny flakes. This one's inspired by... I'm going to say this wrong, the Fritillaria plant. I, I'm not. It's inspired by the Frito plant. <laughs> Price is 13 and there is a cap of a thousand bottles. So uh, despite me not being able to say the Frito plant, this is a wonderful Crelly. It's very reactive on the temperature. And on my last coat there, you can see that there is a touch of a third color state. I think if you have any type of free edge and you're kind of like me where your your body temperature is like 
perpetually in the I'm not really cold, but I'm not really hot sort of state, you'll see it. I'm going to suggest three light to normal coats for opacity. Let it build up. I had no issues in terms of like any over buildup or anything. The formula was fantastic and finished with a good glossy top coat. This is truly lovely. I really appreciated it. And you can see it on my macro shot here, just a little bit of that like intermediate sort of thermal state. And here we've got Wildflower Lacquer. This is Dark Beauty, described as a deep navy base with red to gold to green shifting microflake shimmer and a linear hollow finish. This one's inspired by Wolfsbane. Price is $13.75 and there is no cap. I would describe this one as being one of those kitchen sink polishes that is so loaded up with all types of goodies that you're going to see something different in every light situation. So indoor lights, your kitchen lights, and the public bathroom lights, you're going to see all that holographic goodness. It's linear, it's strong, it's rainbowy. But in shaded lighting and dull lights, you're going to get this very metallic metal looking appearance, almost foil like. It's super interesting. And you'll see kind of like on my macro shot there, all the shifty goodness of those flakes. And here is Zombie Claw. This is playing dead. Described as a green base with black flakies and blue glow in the dark pigment. This one's inspired by the zombie plant. Price is $13.50 and there's a cap of 300 bottles. All right. So um, upon swatching this, I immediately in my head was like, this is for those of us that have made green smoothies in the past. This to me, I'm going to call it the, uh, the spinach smoothie. It's so unique. It's so different. And I so appreciate Zombie Claw like taking the theme, blending it, and then putting it in the nail polish bottle. It's spot on. I'm going to suggest three very light coats. If you tend to apply heavy handed, you'll want to stop at the second coat because the little black flakes here are quite dense, quite heavy, no issues with sinking or any type of fishing. So easy peasy in that regard, but you'll want to finish with a glitter smoothing top coat and a glossy top coat. And here you can see it does glow uh, in the dark blue. Just really, really interesting. And to wrap up this big giant present, we've got the Willet Topper segment. This is where I use a black swatch stick to demonstrate if polishes have the versatility of being used as toppers. Okay, so Baroness X, when wearing it by itself, is a straight up cream. So I think you're putting a cream on top of a cream. So I would say this is best to use as fluid art only or wearing it by itself. Bow Rev looks fantastic. This is beautiful. I think there's a lot of versatility you can do with this. Um, magnetize or unmagnetize. I think it also demonstrates just how like truly weird in the best way possible that it looks. And here we've got BKL. BKL looks really good over black. This is going to topper very well over navies, over cobalts and black colors. I think this is quite versatile in that regard, but any sort of like opposing color, just know it'll tint that base. And Cameo looks so stunning over black. I think this one's going to translate really well over other colors too. There is just so much shimmer action going on that it just helps it overall. Okay, so I showed you guys what chameleon looked like by itself and what it looked like over a green base. And you can see over black or like super dark colors, I wouldn't recommend it. I think you'll want to stick to very light colors and or by itself. Crystal Knockout, I'm on the fence about this one and uh, I think the jury's still out for myself. I'm not sure. I wouldn't personally wear this layered. I think it's perfect by itself. Danglefoot, no surprise. Foils will always look great over black or other colors. There's a lot you can do with this one and it shows just how packed full of shimmer it is. DRK, this is what I'm talking about. Wearing it by itself, you guys are getting an idea on the swatch portion like what it looks like by itself, but over black, it gives you an idea just how packed full this thing is. It's going to be beautiful over any color. Emily Damali shocked me. I wasn't expecting that curly like formula to do so well over black, but it does. So I think there is some versatility that you could play around with it. Femme Fatale, it takes away that whole purpley sort of vibe and the purple mostly translates over the flakes. So I think you can get a really cool opal like effect if you play around carefully with the base color. Hearts and Promises translated so ridiculously well as a topper. No surprise there because it is a true jelly finish. I think if you're careful with your base color itself, you can get some really cool combinations with that cobalt blue. Jen and Berries is stunning over black. It's going to be stunning, I would really say, over a really royal purple, or I would say like reds, even I think a brown would look badass. KB Shimmer, I don't know how else to tell you guys this. It looks fantastic as a topper and I strongly urge you to grab it. It is truly beautiful and so very glowy in person. 
Crisable Designs translates very well as a topper too. It also demonstrates just how packed full of glitter and shimmer this is. This is going to look beautiful over uh, Essie's ballet slippers. I can already say I'm calling it. It's going to be a wonderful wedding springy sort of polish. Monarch Lacquer passes our test and those flakes are beautiful and delicious and so very chunky big. I think you can do a lot with this one. Night Owl, we are si slightly dehorning a unicorn on this because it is just a straight linear hollow. Psych Minerals, um, I knew it was going to do well because it's more of a true jelly formula, but I wasn't expecting it to look like this. This is beautiful. I think it will be a really cool Valentine's Manny too over black. Rogue is stunning. Um, I didn't think that this was going to work, to be honest, especially with that base color, but it does somehow, and it gave a really cool, very pale green sort of opal effect. Sassy Sauce does topper. Given that the cold state is very dark, I would suggest that the darkest undie you wear with this be like a like a gunmetal gray and wildflower topper as well. This one's really interesting. It's just a interesting type of kitchen sink polish. So I do think you can layer and even do some really cool nail art with this one. Maybe even like sponging. Zombie Claw toppers. However, I would strongly suggest going with matchy match bases to or even like a contrasting green to stay within the green family. Okay, so to close out the video, um, I have one non-polished item to show you guys this month, and uh, it's KB Shimmer's Sugar Scrub. I'm such a massive fan of her scrubs. They're so delightful. I'm really thankful also that even though I'm, I'm sick, uh, I still have my sense of smell, so that's really nice, and I can actually talk to you guys about what I'm smelling. So the Sugar Scrub, if you're new to the channel, you're new around here, looks like this. I fancy myself having really big masculine looking hands. And um, that's the comparison there. It's quite a heavy little thing here. And uh, we've got uh, cherry almond to be this month's smell. Um, some of them have a little bit of glitter on the inside there. Uh, I already opened this one up for photos and uh, I'll show behind me here uh, what the photos came out with, what they look like. But this is delightful. It's so good. It is it, it's so foody. Um, I'm getting at the top note, straight cherry deliciousness, like not this suffocating cold medicine cherry I've been taking, but um, this wonderful bakery type of cherry. It's a true cherry as if you opened up the maraschino cherry jar and you just you just smelled it. It's so, so good. And then there's an under note, definitely the almond, that nice nutty sort of almond in the middle. And then very, very soft soft bakery notes, but it's mostly this straight cherry almond. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. Um, these are great for manis if you are using them on your hands um, after you're done, uh, you know, doing your your maintenance and all that good stuff on your nails. I personally like them in the shower. Um, typically every Friday or Saturday is when I just feel like pampering myself. It's been a long week. And what I'd like to do is I, I shower, I'll shave if that's your preference. And then I go in and use my sugar scrub so I don't have to moisturize after I get out of the shower because it leaves this delicious, soft feeling on your skin. It's oily. It's very, very oil based, but the way it rinses off your skin, it's fantastic. So uh, definitely try it. Cherry Almond, it's it's fantastic. I really, really like it. I don't know how KB Shimmer does these scents that are just like, oh, they are they are literally spot on for what their scent descriptions are. So the site is going to go up for wish listing uh, Sunday, this coming Sunday, December. I almost said January, it, December 31st. It's going to go up whenever it's ready. Typically, it's late to mid afternoon time and you'll get in there. You can make an account and uh, just make a wish list. This month is going to be pretty dangerous. Um, it is. Honestly, I was I kind of like miffed about the theme again, because I feel like we've done, you know, science we've done. And, you know, I'm a biologist, microbiologist. So like you'd think I'd be a little more uh, biased towards, you know, plants and science sort of themes. But I was like, OK, I'm kind of over it. We've done this before, sort of. So um, I'm really excited that we got some really unique finishes out of this. Um, but also it's nice for our newer Polish pickup fans to get to see these sort of themes. So. I'll eat my words. That's fine. Um, the shop is going to open up on January 5th at 11 a.m. Eastern time and we're one for shopping pre-order style until January 8th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. At the time that I'm recording my face right now, of course, wish listing isn't up yet. So we're going to do what we've been doing and I'm just going to go through the Facebook thread here for 
the official Deadly Plants Makers spoilers, and we are going to check out. Okay, right off the bat, Fancy Gloss caught my eye. This is so pretty. I think it matches up her inspiration really nice. And it's a blue, super, super shimmery color. So, of course, I like that. Sweet and Sour Lacquer, that also caught my eye. I feel like I've had a couple of ultra, you know, bright, shimmery types of reds in my cart the last couple of months. But um, I'm definitely going to need to check out some swatch videos of that. I think my bestie Lisa has it on her channel. Um, so I need to tune in. I, I think she posted hers last night. But anyways, Penelope Luz looks really pretty. Um, I always love a good pink. I love a good pink that's a strong shimmer. And uh, I think this one fits the bill really nice. Had a lacquer. So I'm always saying I don't like purple. But I always say <laughs> there's that one medium toned purple that... Usually it's either like overly pastel lilac or it's like super neon purple. And this is more on that neon sort of spectrum. And I really like that. That one's really pretty. I like that it's got the chunky glitters. It's got a more retro indie vibe finish to me. Vanessa Molina, I like. This is, it just looks like chaos in a bottle. Like if you ripped up a bunch of like poppy petals or something and stuck it in a bottle, that's what it looks like to me. It's chaotic. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it in terms of finish. Lynn B's um, Deadly Nightshade. Deadly Night. I'm not sure. I uh, might be too medicine head to read that label, <laughs> but uh, it looks very pretty. It looks really beautiful. Um, I've seen a couple other swatches of it so far and I am digging it. So I think this one's definitely going to be 100% uh, will be purchasing that one. Bluebird looks beautiful. I really like this one. Um, I want to see some more swatches. I'm pretty sure Lisa got this one too. I'll check out her video. But um, it's it looks really sparkly. It, it's purple, so we'll see. But I'm, I'm thinking that there might be an, a bit of a bluish, indigo-ish sort of lean to it, but I really like that one. Um, Phoenix. I love the Phoenix. I'm always going to be a sucker for this type of finish. And it's Bulbasaur themed, so I kind of have to have it. I mean, if you see me behind, see behind me there, I've got I've got Snorlax there. So, yeah, that one's uh, definitely gonna be coming home with me. Danny Viana. Um, I want to see some more swatches of this one, but uh, from working with her in the past, I know that her polishes, her thermals are incredibly reactive, and they always have a really nice formula. So I think uh, this one uh, might be on my super, super maybe list. Uh, Watches looks awesome. Um, I've seen a couple of shots of this one so far. And the contrast between the magnetic and the background is stunning. It's chef's kiss. So I think this one definitely is going to skip through um, the elimination stage in my cart and go straight to what I'm going to be grabbing. Polished for days. Uh, Angel Wings looks so, so pretty. Again, I'm a sucker for a good shimmery pink and pinks are probably my second Achilles heel, uh, right up, butted up against blues. Stored by Polish looks really pretty. Um, I'm totally digging this and I can tell just from this, the little swatch stick picture here that, um, it's, it looks like it's going to have a really opaque formula. And sometimes you can just tell based off of, um, a picture, but it looks like it's going to have a nice opaque formula, and I really like that it's this nice bold night sky sort of thing. Garden Path Lacquers. Um, I really like this. This is really intense on the shimmery looking appearance here, and I do love that it's not so much kitchen sink polish. It's more strong shimmer with that nice holographic fleck in the background. Garden Path, I almost... I never really say no to, so I, I always have always loved her formulas. Devine Lacquer's Fire Piranha, um, not just for the inspiration, it being the piranha plant in Mario, but um, I have to have this. Um, she describes it as being a white base with a blue undertone and red, orange, gold, green shifting shimmer. I'm going to need that. Like this, this one I think is also going to go straight into my, my actual cart. I really like this one. All mixed up lacquers. So we've got, we've got another uh, piranha plant from Mario theme. I'm really glad that I'm seeing at least one because that was such an outside the box, cute way of di interpreting the theme. And this looks glowy. So I really like this one. And I think that's also going to be uh, skipping into my cart too. I like like that. It's just really unique, especially amongst the finishes for the month. So that's it for what has caught my eye for this month. Um, I'm going to have all of the information uh, in this video for wishlisting and the official pre-order dates, in addition to timestamps if you need to go back and look at anything. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment below. Um, I'd also especially like to hear what you guys would like to see in 2024. I'm at the drawing board right now trying to think of new ways and stuff that uh, we can uh, just 
expand the channel a little more. Um, I'm hoping to have a couple things up my sleeve to uh, get to in 2024. I'm not going to spill anything yet, but uh, we'll see about that. So uh, in addition to your uh, comments, just, you know, what's on your wish list, maybe what you'd like to see, say hi, anything like that, and you'll be entered into my giveaway. I'm going to pull winners on Tuesday. So stick around for that. Uh, turn your notifications on. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, we are so close to 6K and I'd love to hit up a maker for a good custom for that giveaway too. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.